Hi, Albus. Uh, I'm, I mean, uh, Mr. Alban. Uh, I'm David. Uh, oh. uh, I, I emailed you uh, about the interview. Ah, uh, uh, of course. My apologies. Please do come in. Uh, thank you. My apartment's right upstairs. Okay. Drink? Um, no, thank you. You can just take a seat anywhere. What's your name again? Uh, David Lee. That's good. Good journal name. You want to get started? Um, yeah, if you don't mind. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll is a term similar to for... fucking God. Oh. What? Stop right there. I'm sorry? Is it all like this? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Come on, hand, hand it over. Oh, this... This is terrible. Oh, uh, no. In an, in an adorable way. <laughs> Look at this ending. Uh, how much do you miss the music? And do you think the music misses you? It was just a template. <laughs> I wasn't really going to follow it. You want to know something? You want to know what the best journals I encountered in my day had in common? What? I forgot they were journals. They would come on tour with us, and for the first couple of weeks, obviously, you know, we keep our guard up. But after a party or two, it's much easier to open up to someone if you're tripping acid with them. It's almost like chatting with a buddy. They turn it into a story. You know, I think I would take that drink. There we go. What do you really want to know? I don't know. 
You're Alda Sullivan. I, I have no idea. That I am. I don't know what to ask you. Oh, come on, son. There must be some things you're curious about. Why are you here? In Boston, I mean. This isn't exactly where rock stars go to retire. Now that, that's a good question. Yeah. My daughter. She's at Tufts. Very bright girl. You close? Oh, of course not. Imagine that. A rock star close with his daughter? No. But I like to be nearby in case she needs anything. What else have you got? Are you still rich? <laughs> David, how crass. What? Well, asking about my personal affairs, you should be ashamed of yourself. I don't know. This is an interview. A retired rock star and all, there's an assumption. That I've blown it all away? Well, yeah. I do all right, relatively. I should be doing a lot better, but that's another issue. There's no need for a Christmas album just yet. I've got one for you. Sure. Are you actually a fan or was that just grease for the door? <laughs> no, I really am. Come on, David, I'm no fool. Your generation isn't exactly fighting for our records. Well, we stream it. <laughs> That will explain these meager royalties. I really am a fan, though. Uh, I admit uh, I only saw you on t-shirts before college, but my roommate used to blast your music all the time. Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah, that's a way to call it. Uh, but that song, Paradise Hills, so good. Really one of the best songs of all time. You know, I actually still like that song. Most people thought it was about cocaine. It's not? No. I wrote it about Sylvia, my daughter. I asked her drummer, Ricky, if we could do a song about her. And it turned into a drug anthem. Fitting, isn't it? Does she know about the song? No. Stop staring. I'm not staring. I'm watching TV. You're so close. I'm not close. Jesus Christ. It's okay. It's not really there yet. What do you mean? Like the stories of his glory days are fun and the fact that he likes Takashi 6 ix 9 is interesting. So is that something you'd be interested in? I'd be interested in... Your editors at the Globe, do you think you could give it to them? It's not up to me. I can give you my editor's email and you could pitch it, but I don't think he'd go for it. Why not? Like, if I see this on Facebook, i definitely click it. Reading about Aldous Aubin's wild days on tour, celebrity encounters, what he's up to now. So it's too lowbrow for the Globe. I'm not saying that. It sounds like you're saying that. Yeah, way to swing your big dick, Sabrina. Well, we just don't print this kind of stuff. So what do you suggest? Well, what about all that stuff with the teenagers? All those affairs, all that shady shit. <laughs> no, no way, I'm not gonna do that. Well, it's the second part of the story. I'm not gonna ambush the guy, he's doing me a favor. It's up to you what kind of story you wanna write. 
He never took anything off the table, did he? Wait, what are you talking about? What off the table? I thought you were a huge Aldous Albin fan. I am. Well, your idol in the 80s briefly married an 18-year-old girl when he was 50. Then He's when she turned 20, he dumped her. He's a rock star. They all do this stuff, especially She went on record saying she was 13 when they started their relationship. Fuck off. It's a matter of public record. What? It's a matter of public record. That there are personal accounts, photos. Of what? Them fucking. Of them at clubs, at restaurants. It was all over the media. No one was hiding it. I mean, if it was, if that was true, it would have been everywhere. I, I would have heard about it. He used to walk the red carpet with a teenager. Everyone knew. So what you're saying, everyone just knew and no one gave a shit. Look, David's scared to even speak about it to him, even now. These guys got a free pass for the longest time. Look at R. Kelly, Seinfeld, Woody Allen. People only just recently started giving a shit about this kind of stuff, even though it's been a matter of public record for decades. I would have read about it, seen it somewhere. It's because nobody's written about it yet. I can't. Well, then maybe you don't have what it takes. Dave was absolutely furious about what was unfolding. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, he was so into that broad, he was mad. I, I don't understand, just... though. Why do you guys always bully Dave? <laughs> it wasn't bullying. We loved him. We loved him. He just, he just set himself up constantly asking for it. Uh, another one? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> Were there a lot of girls on tour? Oh yeah, oh yeah, plenty of them. They loved it. The fame, the lifestyle, the music, they wanted to be part of it. <laughs> Do you think they liked you? They worshipped me. Which do you think they like more? Sorry? The lifestyle or you? <laughs> ah, David, very good. First rate interviewing. Probably the lifestyle. And definitely the lifestyle. I don't see any problem with that though. Um, some guys are handsome, others are funny. Why shouldn't I use what I've got, right? That uh, actually leads me to another question I wanted to ask oh. you. <laughs> Not the fucking notebook again. <laughs> Always with the hard notebook stuff. I have to write the questions down somewhere. <laughs> Ruins the flow, the flow. The flow is so important. Ah, uh, go on. Uh, what has that notebook got to say? Uh, I wanted to talk about Sarah Adler. Sarah? Why? You know, you're, you two were married at, some would say, the peak of your career. And? Uh, I just wanted to know her influence on you. Uh, as a muse, maybe, or her support. Sarah was lovely. Lovely girl. Very supportive. She wanted to be a pop star herself. Uh, <laughs> at times I thought it was the only thing she wanted. You know, the fame, prestige, money. Would explain why she was with an old bag like me. Uh, there was a considerable difference in age between us, you know. So, she was always very supportive about everything. Supportive, perhaps because she wanted it for herself. She did put out a couple uh, of songs. They were terrible. Good God, were they awful. Nothing in them. That explains why her album did so poorly, you know? I, I, there was no soul to her music. You see, entertainment, it's a democracy. Either people like it or they don't. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, no bullshit, no nepotism. You can have all the connections in the world and it all comes down to the bottom line, doesn't it? I guess you could say that. Uh, to focus on Sarah specifically, your relationship with her wasn't exactly conventional. So? You know, in many ways, uh, uh, the tabloids are always following you around, two musicians dating. Uh, there, there was, like you said, the considerable age gap. And you know, there's, with your marriage, there were perceptions. Is this the road we're going down now, David? 
I, I don't know what you mean. I want to know. Is this the dirty of it? Is this the grit of your story? I don't know what you're saying, Aldous. I get it. I do. I really do. You got a job to do. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's a great title. But you want to know what people really want to read? Schadenfreude. Look, Aldous, I'm just trying to talk about things people my age want to see. A new take. A new headline? I, I don't know. But what do you really want to ask me, David? I just want to know how she affected you. Come on, David. Don't be a coward. Ask me the real questions. Get to the bottom of it. What do you want me to say? You have the questions. Oh, not in here. You know the question. Ask it. Ask it, David. How old was she when you started sleeping with her? How old was she, Aldous? I think we're done here for today. You know, David, I need to apologize. Oh. <clears throat> for, for what? No, oh, come now. My behavior last time, it was unbecoming. I'm really happy you came back. There's no need to apologize. I was rude and... Well, and just passive. like any journal worth his salt should be. And you're worth your salt, David. Thank you. For this last session, I wanted to talk about the days after the music, the solo projects, the reunion. You can't prepare for it. Prepare for what? Any of it. One day you're singing in a bar and the next in a stadium where all the people know the lyrics. You can't talk about it either because no one else understands it. Unless, uh, of course, they've been through it. When I used to introduce myself as a musician, uh, before the success, people used to scoff, not to my face, you know, 